Hello, teachers, parents, and educational leaders, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Best. Now, during this episode, you will get a peek into the members-only area where I have tons of resources to help you make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. There should be a link somewhere around this video where you can learn more. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to it and let's break down the standard. Welcome to Breaking Down the Best, a video series dedicated to breaking down Florida's best standards for math. So grab something to write with and maybe even a snack. This looks good. And don't forget to put a smile on your face. There you go, I see you. And let's dive into today's best standard. Hello, hello, and welcome. My name is Sarah McCarthy, the creator of McCarthy Math Academy. And I just wanna thank you for taking time out of your crazy, busy, hectic schedule to join me on this episode of Breaking Down the Best. So let's go ahead and just jump on in for our standard today, which happens to be MA, which stands for math, dot three, that's third grade, dot NSO, number sense operations, dot 1.4, which is our standard, the benchmark for today. Okay, so this one is all about rounding. We're rounding whole numbers from zero to 1,000 to the nearest 10 or 100. This is actually really similar to where we're coming from with the common core standards, but there is a difference in terms of what is expected, okay? Um, let me see. So you can take a look at the examples up there, but what is connecting? What is What does this standard connect to in other third grade standards? It connects to the previous standard, which is NSO.1.3, which is where we're plotting, ordering, and comparing numbers because number lines are going to be key for this standard right here. So everything that they worked on with plotting numbers will definitely help this time. Another connecting benchmark would be NSO.2.1, adding and subtracting because the whole point for doing rounding, for rounding in the first place, is to use it as a tool for estimation when you're estimating sums and differences. So that's why it connects to that one right there. Your students will need to know the term number line and also whole numbers, which is anything starting with zero and counting up to one, two, three, four, all the way up. No fractions, no decimals for the standard, okay? All right, so where are they coming from? Comings and goings. They are coming from the second grade standard, which is very similar. It's rounding, rounding numbers, sorry, zero to 100 to the nearest 10. So numbers between zero and 100 saying, are they closer to this 10 or that 10? And then in fourth grade, again in third grade, we're going all the way up to 1,000. In fourth grade, they are going up to 10,000 to the nearest 10, 100, and 1,000. So this will definitely connect to next year as well. Let's see, in the purpose and instructional strategies, what jumped out at me? Um, here. This was a big one. It's important for students to have numerous experiences using a number line. What I actually, what I love about this standard compared to where we're coming from with Common Core is that it forced me to teach rounding concretely to make it make sense, okay? And the number line happens to be my favorite now after creating, taking on the best. Um, also using a place value chart, which we will do in the video lessons. And the 100 chart, didn't really do that one, but we did do a place value chart. If you need to move it down to a 100's chart to show kind of that um, that second grade, zero to 100, going to the nearest 10, 100's chart would be a great way to show that. Uh, what else jumped out at me? Okay. Um, underline benchmark 10's. For instance, the number 643 goes between 64 tens or 640 and 65 tens, 650. So it kind of connects to that decomposing number standard. I believe it's NSO.1.2 for third grade. Um, also, the rule is if a number is exactly at the halfway point, the halfway point, so hang on, you're using a number line 
the halfway point is huge. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time explaining how to round because I've done that in the video lessons that I'll take you to in just a second. Um, but this halfway point is huge. And when you, if you are exactly at the halfway, the number needs to be rounded up. Okay. And then over here, rounding is, numbers is a skill that helps students estimate. I put right here the why. This is the whole reason for rounding in the first place. It's to build that number sense. It's to see numbers and then be able to do the quick math in your head just through estimation to see if the actual answer is reasonable or not. And then here too, that rounding numbers and an expression should be done before performing the operation. So I know when I was a student, I used to solve, like if I had, let me give you an example, a basic example. Let's say I had 237 plus 492, okay? I would actually, when I was a student, I would actually solve out the answer for this and then round that to find the estimate. And that's not what the expectation is here. The expectation is that when you're estimating to see if an answer is reasonable, that you round 237, maybe to 200, 492 to 500, and then you add 200 plus 500 to get 700 and say, okay, when I find the actual sum, it should be somewhere close to 700, right? That is what we want, to round first and then see if our actual is close rather than finding the actual first and then rounding that. It doesn't make sense. Something I did as a kid, though. Confession. Uh, <laughs> okay, this was a big one. I said, instruction should not focus on tricks for rounding. And I put, eek! And even down here, we need a conceptual understanding of rounding without mnemonics, rhymes, or songs. And if you have been following me for a while, you know that I have a rounding wrap that is in McCarthy Math 155. And that is not the point of this standard. The point is to have a conceptual understanding of it. And in taking on the best, that is what I focused on. So the rounding wrap is not there. If you have the gold plan, you will have access to rounding practice that does show the rounding wrap. But I wanna point out here that this one is saying to not rely on those songs, okay? Now, for my opinion, you gotta do what you gotta do. Right, as teachers, we try everything to try to make it make sense for our students. But what I would do though, is try to, to really focus on that conceptual understanding, really focus on the number line strategy because I think that's gonna do it for you. And then um, you, can, you can bring up the rounding wrap, but I'm just pointing it out. It says right there, without it. And in the taking on the best videos, I've done it without the rounding wrap, okay? You've been warned. Let me see, is there anything else that jumps out at me for this? Um, I guess just when looking at these instructional items, when you have multi-select like this, just make sure your students are going through each one and showing their journey on paper, not just reading it, but really working it out to see if it makes sense. Like 302 rounded to the nearest 10 is 300. Have them work that out, okay? or at least show some kind of understanding to the side of that. All right, now that we've done that, let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the resources that you have access to in your members only area. All right, here we go. So members enter here. We're looking at taking on the best you do. If you're a gold member, you do have access to McCarthy Math 155. You can enter that way, but we are all about the best right now, focusing on the best. Which grade would we like to explore? Third grade. We are on the strand of NSO and we need that 1.4 rounding to the nearest 10 and 100. All right, so if you have a bronze membership or silver or gold, you have access to these bronze resources, which involves the video lesson and the printable right here, okay? Now, if you are thinking, how in the world am I going to teach my students how to round without using any tricks or um, songs or anything like that, I do suggest watching the video because I've broken down a way to do it. You can see with the printable, it says for the first one and for all of them really, to round the number to the nearest 10, use a number line, place value blocks, and a place value chart to show your thinking. We go through all three of those strategies there without using a song, okay? 
And frankly, that's how I'll teach it from now on. <laughs> Cause I was like, this is, this is really good. See, even I'm learning, it's awesome. All right, so you have, in the first video, we're focusing on rounding to the nearest 10, sorry, nearest 10. The second video is rounding to the nearest 100. And the third video is putting the whole Y into there. We are doing this to estimate sums and differences. Okay, so you have access to all three of those videos in the bronze package. If you have the silver package, you have the bronze resources, plus you have your silver extras, silvers. Um, you have your printables. We can take a look. So here's your video lesson printable, right? Then we've got some extra practice. So after we do it in the video, now you have some extra practice ready to go. Two pages of extra practice for rounding to the nearest 10. Then we have rounding to the nearest hundred. We've got, I think two practice, two extra practices. Yep. Three and four. Then we have a video lesson on estimating sums and differences. And then they can apply what they've learned in the video lesson to this extra practice, two extra practice pages there. Then you have your math mission. Let's take a look at what this one says. Use the cards below to create three different numbers, then round the numbers that you create to the nearest 10 and 100. So students are using these cards to create their own number and then they're rounding them over there. Then we've got one where Tasha's creating a number and explaining how she rounded um, oh, she's creating a number, her number. Yeah. So they have to say, okay, so another student created a number. What number do you think that may have been? So it's taking their learning up a notch, applying a lot more critical thinking using those math missions. And this is the detective report for your math misconception mystery video. That is where there are four characters, which are really just me dressed up as different characters, solving the problem. Three of the characters are incorrect. Only one is correct. Students have to pay attention really closely to see who solved the problem correctly, who has the most reasonable answer, and which ones do not and why. It's awesome for math discourse, error analysis. It creates a place for students to analyze mistakes. It's awesome. So take a look at that. Those are your printables. You also have your answer keys. I just want to open this so you can see like there's space there, but we're doing a whole lot of work just under one. And here's an example of how to round 314 to the nearest 10, showing that it's closer to 310 than 320. And I walk the students through this in the video lesson. Okay. All right. If you are a gold member, you have access to the bronze video lessons. You have access to the silver extra stuff and the math misconception mystery. Plus you have access to the mini assessments, McCarthy Math 155 lessons, and breaking down the best ad-free gold. You got your mini assessment here. See the variety of question types, multi-select, using a number line to round and explain. And then you have an answer key. I'm not gonna show that now, but you can see it if you have your gold membership. And um, okay, breaking down the best, that's what you're watching right now. So by the time you see this video, there'll be a nice little video in there for you. And you can also access McCarthy Math 155, which is um, aligned to the Common Core standards. There are a lot in third grade, there are a lot of rounding videos. But again, if you go down here, keep in mind that this was using a rounding wrap. Okay, this is the rounding wrap. When you round, find and underline the place. Okay, it's a rounding wrap that I teach in that one, but the best standards specifically do not want you to do that. And that's where those video lessons will help you out. Okay, um, I think that's it. All right, before we go, let me remind you that what you wake up every day and choose to do with your life, it really matters. I know that this profession is crazy, busy, exhausting, and all the feelings but it matters and it's worth it. And guess what? If nobody told you today, you're doing awesome and I believe in you. The truth is our students, they are the future, right? And we may never get to know how our time with our students really impacts them, but we have to trust that we are making a difference. We have to trust that what we do and what we bring to the table really does have a significant impact in their lives and hopefully leads them to the person that they were born to be. With that said, thank you for joining me on today's episode and I cannot wait to see you real soon.
Okay, so I know that I just said goodbye for now, but I'm gonna ask you to do one more thing, okay? If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your teacher friends or other leaders in education. That's how I get to continue doing what I love to do, which of course is supporting you all to the best <laughs> of my ability. All right, for real now, bye.